What's up, fools? This is the Joe Pajosa podcast. Joe Pajosa podcast, episode 25. It's no longer called On Average Fools. Trying to hold more accountability, you know? <laughs> My name's not On Average Joe anymore, but it's uh, Joe Pedrosa. Just Average Joe. <laughs> yeah, I, I realize I'm an average Joe, so <laughs> kind of fuck myself working that nine to five. That shit I've been talking about my whole life to quit. I'm never going to do that ever in my life. <laughs> and now I work a nine to five again. Because <laughs> the, the way out, the true way out is you need to create your own business, which I'm still doing. I'm trying to create my own hustle, you know? Um, but obviously it's going to take years to build, but within building this, there is beauty in the struggle. Beauty in the struggle. Yeah, that's what you see how I did. I did. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Joe. All right. <laughs> so we did a podcast, uh, cut like couple two years ago, ago, a couple years ago, December, uh, sorry, June. it was June, 2020, four months in, four yeah. months into Quar- first quarantine. We made a podcast called beauty in the struggle. We made a podcast called Beauty in the Struggle? Bro, we, we listened to the podcast today, bro. Oh, my bad. I got confused. <laughs> Anyways, keep going. We made a podcast called Beauty in the Struggle. And essentially, we were like kids. We didn't know what we were talking about. How old were we? I was like 20 or ni- 20 or 21. That means I was, I was like, like 19 or 20. Okay, that means I was like... You're like 17 or 18. You're 18. You're 18, one year 19. below me. Yeah, 18, 19. Yeah, yeah. So... Essentially, we were Holy kids. Fuck. I know, Damn, I was fucking fun. time ago. Just to ref- like for reference, I'm twenty. I'm turning twenty three. I'm like, nearly twenty two. Yeah, I'm turning twenty three in a couple of days. Back then, what we didn't, day? November tenth. Okay. November tenth. <laughs> be there or be square. Be there or be square. But essentially, when we made that podcast, like we were just talking about the perspective of life we had at that moment, right? Yeah. Because. Uh, at that time, I was still living with my parents. You were still living with your mom. Yeah, I was yeah. still living with my mom. You're still living with your mom. Yeah, my- we knew what struggle was, you know. But we didn't like. We didn't really. Know. We didn't. We didn't understand it. Understand <laughs> yeah, it. Now we understand it. You know, we were in our our parents' roofs. We we're like, oh, we got all this money. I'm driving my mom's car as <laughs> yeah. if it's mine and shit. Yeah, I'm driving my groceries in the Honda fridge, Civic, bro. Yeah, groceries in the. No fridge. bills. I'm not paying a bill in my life. You know what <laughs> yeah. I mean? Just now, saving money. Now we both uh, we live alone or we live independently. Now yeah. we don't live with our parents. And uh, fucking a big change, big change. The yeah. struggle out here trying to make it. <laughs> now I'm trying to figure out how to make money, bro. Like yeah. not working a traditional job. I'm trying to figure out. Like this dude's self-employed. This dude works for himself. Self-taught so, tattoo artist. Yeah. You know I mean? So essentially, there's a four cash quadrant. Uh, it's called. It's the steps is employee, self-employed, business owner, yeah. and then uh, investor. Mm-hmm. So I'm in the employee part, trying to do my side hustle, trying to become self-employed. This dude's already self-employed. And then the next step is business owner. Exactly. Do you have any uh, like future prospects of being a business owner? Hell yeah. Like, what do you, you know do? how I was telling you that I want to like travel and tattoo? Mm-hmm. So that's like my short-term goal. Um, but after all that traveling, I do want to settle down, open a shop, and all the artists that I've meet, like met. Throughout the entire world? Throughout whoever I say it connected to, you know what I mean? Yeah. Ask them if they want to work at the shop, or even guest artists at the shop. You know what I mean? And That'd then, be cool. Yeah. W- where would you be based if you did that? Or would you have a specific theme to You're the in, shop? I, well, I, I told you in the car, it was like, Europe. I want to settle in Europe. Yeah. Because it's just like, like, bro, you take, you go to Amsterdam, you take the train to Paris. Yeah. Take train to Paris, all the way. You can go to the red light district. I know that's one of your hot spots. You yeah, to go to. very. I love that spot. <laughs> red light district. <laughs> you wanted to go to the blue light district, didn't the you? The fuck is that? It's like the opposite of it. Oh, is it? Yeah. It's like the churchgoers, <laughs> Amish people. No, it's like it's for dudes. It's like the dudes are lined up in the windows instead. In the red light district is a woman. That's a thing? That's a thing. When I was walking the red light district... Hey, you, so know, you know which light we go into, bro? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so I wanted to ask you yeah. uh, a couple questions based on no. struggling. No. No? Okay. No, sorry. Uh, cut the podcast right now. Cut the podcast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go. So go, go. essentially, uh, when was your last depressive episode? <laughs> <laughs> Hmm, number one. <laughs> Yesterday was pretty shitty. Um, 
<laughs> Real oh, man. Let me go check my phone. I'm joking. Right. You don't have to Saturday? I thought it's that would Saturday, be November. <laughs> it was the last hour. <laughs> um yeah, 30 minutes ago we were walking in the snow. Wave of depression. <laughs> um, you don't actually have yo, to okay, okay. Else. So the answer to that was You haven't marked down on your right, calendar, bro. The day I moved into that place of work credit. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> no, I, What's uh, wrong with the place you live in now? No, import the the one after, like before that one. Oh, the before the that previous one. one. Oh, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The, like the, the one where I was one. living alone. Yeah. Living alone for a year and a half. So no. what, like, what made it so hard? You living alone. Like, what was the whole uh, process like, or what was the whole experience like living alone? Okay, well. Coming from my mom's crib, you know what I mean? When you're, like, sheltered, you got, like, you don't really have to think about much, you know what I mean? Um, going to the place, I went blind, like, just blind-eyed. I didn't, I didn't know yeah, about yeah, bills. Like, didn't go, yeah. I, don't, I don't know anything <laughs> about shit, rent. Bro. I was like, I could get the place in a week. I just have to make 30 like, X amount know? of money yeah. uh, in a week. Okay, let's go. Got the place, blah, blah, blah. And just didn't expect anything of it. Had a roommate. He left. Now it's just me. Didn't want to find a roommate. I was too comfy, just like tatting, all that. And then bills started coming in. And then I started lacking because just too much smoking, too yeah. much drugs, too much laziness, too much comfort. Um, you were comfortable even in the mode of being alone. You're still comfortable? I was, I was comfortable in the sense where I had a lot of vices that I could rely on to make me feel that comfort. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, obviously I was going through so much stress, but repressed it with like drugs. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And like, um, I guess a couple months after that, literally like a year and a half after that, when like, I'm about to like leave the crib and everything. Um, the week before I just went like crazy, just like absolutely crazy. Just, crying almost every night literally and like going like literally just spending every fucking day by myself and like like i'll have like my significant other at the time like message me i wouldn't reply or nor and that goes for anyone really yeah, like i responding to anybody no like no one like i'd take like either like a day to respond or like years because i didn't want to like deal with people yeah. I didn't want to have a connection with anyone. And I became lonely. I became too reliant on the money. On just, like, working my ass off. Working my ass off to, like, a- attain <laughs> depression, pretty much. You know what I mean? <laughs> just to, I mean, but, like, through that, you realize. You yeah. realize so much coming out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, it, there's, there, they did this TED Talk. They did this study done where, essentially, what was, like, the foundations of happiness. Yeah. And, like... <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't take you seriously right now. Go, 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 go. <laughs> now you start talking and I'm like, I'm looking at you. And I'm like, God damn, I'm going to burst into laugh. <laughs> All right, go, 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 go. A, a big part of yeah, happiness yeah. comes from... <laughs> comes from what? <laughs> what? Comes, <laughs> comes from what? Comes from what? It comes like, from relationships. Yeah. And then, but you cut out all of it what was it to was it in the pursuit of success trying to become like this best version of yourself or was it did it come from something else like the depression no no, no like you cutting off all these people oh because um, like i haven't talked to you like really talked yeah, to you in like a year yes. like i haven't like last time i hung out with you and like, i had like, a good conversation yeah it was new york which was december i was fucked up we was, all know how new york went yeah I mean, we don't i never posted a video about it yeah no we but didn't this past the past time when i was in new york with neil i was with my friend my two other friends i was like fucked up over a short Christian day. 
One, two, three, two other friends. You and me, two other Oh, yeah, friends. my bad. <laughs> yeah, bro. The weed's still in me. <laughs> <laughs> so, I was, like, fucked up over yeah. shorty, bro. You know, I was, like... Yeah. I, you know, I was, like, I was playing, like, Kanye West, never see me again, you know? <laughs> I was, like, don't worry about me. I'm worry about you. You know? I was, like, I was, I was being depressed. Oh, my dolos, bro. <laughs> yeah, bro. Yeah. <laughs> but I haven't had a proper conversation with you. I haven't properly hanged out with you since yeah. then. And now it's no november and we're by the way we're in fucking edmonton yeah we're in, edmonton, in a hostel, in a hostel. Of all, <laughs> like out of all places you know? yeah i mean well we in the in the podcast that we did we literally had dreams talking about like yeah. traveling together literally yeah. doing podcasts so what we're doing right world. now literally. so we achieve what we're gonna say and it wasn't planned doing. it was not planned yeah it wasn't planned because we were tra- we were re-watching the podcast that yeah. like we made called Beauty and the Struggle mm-hmm. and it literally said like I wish we we're in some other part of the world yeah, yeah exactly um, later in life trying to do this podcast yeah. but finish cool that, that bucket list it. okay okay I want to know <laughs> wait what were you originally talking about I don't know we sidetrack bear yeah we do we do sidetrack okay let me ask you a question okay go what what oh, is, depressive episode and then I was just went on about the crib and all depressive that. episodes. I was really gonna ask Oh, connection. I was like, um, I was cutting people out and everything. You asked like, um, was it was it because of the success or was it because of something else? So what was it? Okay, yeah, I did, you see, I did not go into it. Did we even answer that no, question? No, no, no. <laughs> okay, but we'll start from here. Okay. Um, I think me cutting out, <laughs> me just ghosting all those people, it was just like, more so a success and like, I have like I have to be independent. Like it was just like a mindset to be independent for me. Just like do everything on my own. This is how I'm gonna show myself I'm independent. You know what I mean? And it's like, like, well, first you chase the money, right? Yeah. You chase the money. You keep going. You keep going. You keep going. And like obviously you're making, you're racking in good money. You know what I mean? So you keep doing it. You keep doing it. And you just forget about everyone else. Everyone that's not part of that plan to, for success is out. Yeah, and it's it, it was it's an asshole thing, obviously, but like, it's where my mind went, you know. Obviously, it's a shit thing, like to you. Do, you. do you still hold that value of money with? No, no. I mean, after I like, you know, after I like, 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 um, like, left from the crib in Port Credit. Yeah. Um, in that time of just like, on my own in Toronto and everything, like, uh. It showed me the true value of life. You know what I mean? Like, to be happy, like, like I said earlier, like, walking down the streets of Toronto um, at, like, 6 p.m., go to this, like, restaurant called Thai Lime, and I would go there mostly every night, almost every really? night. And the guys knew me, you know what I mean? So they know what I'm ordering. And I would just have conversations with this guy that was staying there because his name is Ian. And he was just staying there for a bit because his crib was, like, getting worked on and all that. Yeah. But just having those conversations and being able to, like, I don't know, just find happiness when you have, like, absolutely nothing but a backpack, a couple clothes, and, like... A tattoo gun. <laughs> and a tattoo gun. Like... Yeah. You, you don't need much to put a smile on your face or to go back to where you're staying and being, like... You know what, like, today was actually really good. I'm glad I met this person. I'm glad I met that person. And it really humbled me um, and kind of showed me the importance of connection and interacting with people and getting to know them. So you're starting to transition from the money value to the human connection value. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I'm still trying to realize myself. Mm -hmm. Like, money, power, and fame. That's the top three things where like social media or people say like this is what you should focus on this is Mm -hmm. what's most important at least like that's what's being pushed out in the hollywood sense like money power fame Mm -hmm. if people don't care about clout like even just money itself like those are the things people are trying to hold value for but i'm trying to connect with people Mm -hmm. and use that as like i I, what i'm trying to realize now is what's most important Mm -hmm. is what is real like what is real will prosper yeah uh, meaning and truth, I think, comes from, like, what's real. Mm-hmm. And right now, I'm trying to make each video different, kind of like a fundamental truth that we have, like, in the world. 
Um, Wait, so, but but you said you're making that, you're, you're still trying to figure out that transition, right? I'm still trying to figure out. But I feel like you're already, like, maybe you don't realize it right now, man, but you're already doing it. You've been doing it in the summer. And it's, yeah, maybe it's, maybe right now it's about the money in your mind, but you're connecting with people. You're having these experiences. So yeah. it's not like, don't, like, I don't think you've ever forgot about that, bro, because I know that you hold that deeply attached to the art that you make in order to make money. You know what I mean? Like you hold that connection part very deeply and it runs deeply within your brand. You think so? Yes, bro. Why am I here? <laughs> like, You're cool dude, you know? yeah, I'm a cool guy. <laughs> no, but like for real, like then I wouldn't be here if it wasn't about a connection also. Unless you're just lying to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. if it's just about money, you know? Yeah. But I, like, like, maybe I'm just here to remind you that. Because it's like, bro, like, you're doing it. Yeah. You're doing it, man. That's all, yeah. I, Don't I, worry. I, thanks, man. I yeah, maybe you're, like, overthinking it. I do. I, I overthink I, I, off. Like, <laughs> from a third-person perspective, just, like, it's, it's very true. Like, you're very, you connect with people. You stay connected to the people even in Toronto. Yeah. You know what I mean? You still make plans with them. Oh, we're going to go do shit for your birthday. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> My birthday is going to be like 18 fucking minutes. Yeah, it's going to be one thing, bro. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I appreciate that, Neil. Yeah, I think it, what it is is, like, I see... I, I'm like... Like, you know I'm very critical. Not critical. I'm very analytical in the things mm -hmm. I do. Very. And I'm in, like, the employee section of my life. Yeah. I want to be in the self-employed version. Mm -hmm. So I guess if when I get to that point when I'm making money off of my art, like through conversations, through my filmmaking, mm -hmm. then I can get to a point where like all I focus on is just connecting. Yeah. Because okay, okay, makes sense. Yeah, it's just like every yo, I try checking my bills and shit. I'm like, dude, life is just so freaking expensive, bro. It's so expensive to live. I mean, like, Calgary <laughs> ain't that bad as yeah, Toronto. Yeah, Calgary is not that bad as but, Toronto. But, you know, you're still managing and you're still doing it, yo. Yeah, I'm on an all carnivore diet, spending $400 a month on food, bro. Like, it's actually fucked. Diarying. Yeah, every, diarying. every minute, every time okay. you want to fart. <laughs> the beginning of a <laughs> carnivore diet, your gut biome needs to, like, rearrange itself. Yeah. <laughs> so, you get these, like, diarrhea. Fucks. <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't know if it's fart, if it's a fart, or if it's, a, if it's diarrhea, you yeah, know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've had it a couple times, not gonna lie. Um... <laughs> Did I, I'm not sure if I asked you this question. What is the price of success? Did I ask you that? Or no, you didn't ask me that. What, what do you think is the price of success? So when you're at that state of, do you, okay, are you at the point where like you wanted to be a year ago when you isolated yourself from those people and you said, I want to get to the top. I want to get, like, mm -hmm. I want to be number one. What was, are you there? And also what was the price of getting there if you did get there? That's a good ass question, boy. Um, no, I'm not there yet. Not at all. Where'd you want to be last year, like right now? I think it was traveling. Like it traveling was traveling. and tattooing though. Okay. Traveling and tattooing. Yeah. I think that's where my mind was at. But I'm not there yet. But I'm I, I definitely know I'm in like the right step towards that in terms of how I feel towards my tattoos, my tattoo account. Like very much more happy with it and I know through I mean, all the work that I'm putting into it, um, just being even nitpicky with like the designs I do now and uh, just trusting myself really with it, I know I'm gonna be able to get to the top. In terms of, uh, what's it called? What, I had to like, the price of it. The price. Would you have to give up? Would you have to sacrifice? I'm not, obviously I'm not there, but I definitely had to sacrifice a lot. I had to basically, uh, well, I did cut off everyone. You know what I mean? Like, I ghosted everyone. Um, to put it simply, like, you have to... I lost everything. Everything. You know? Aside from my backpack. <laughs> but, um... And a couple people that were, like, there for me during that time, you know? Yeah. And, um... But initially, it's you. When you lose everything, uh, it makes you think, you know? Oh, no shit. You know what I mean? Like, when you're homeless, like... That really, like when you're actually experiencing it and figuring out like where, where am I sleeping tonight? Or can I even, do I have enough money to eat? 
um, do I have to ask people for money at this, like now? You know yeah. what I mean? Or like at, even at the time, like it was just getting colder. Now. I was just in a t-shirt. I had to make money, like, like do tattoos, obviously. And like, there's times where I even ask people for money. You know what I mean? Just to like, to be able to buy a sweater for myself, you know? And it's yeah. like, um, and lose like, that's just like the material stuff of it. Like even with connections, losing all these great people uh, missing out on all these like opportunities and fun experiences and memories I could have made like with significant others and friends. Um, yeah, that must that that's probably the hardest one because coming out of such like an isolated period, you. It's, I wrote this in my notes before, and I said it's hard to know yourself when you're not surrounded by people. Because yes, people like like you make you yourself um like you do create yourself but everyone around you and being connected also create you you know what i mean okay, like yeah. like like everyone that you meet um affects your life somehow right fuck i don't even know what i just said bro <laughs> the people in your life create who you are like little slivers of them that's what you were saying Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> my bad. My bad, bro. <laughs> I good. got like lost in the sauce, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. We all do. Um, but yeah, just like coming out of that, you. Oh, okay. Fuck. 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 We got it. Say it again. So, <laughs> what was it, bro? The price of success. We were talking about um, how you basically what what you had to sacrifice so you sacrifice material items yeah. you, fac- you sacrifice social relationships yeah. in your notes you mentioned oh, okay, yeah. the people um the people it's hard to know yourself when you're, you're not surrounded, surrounded by people you're not surrounded yeah, yeah. by people um but yeah. don't, don't you think that's the truest way to know yourself it's being surrounded by people is not being surrounded by people because you have no no outside influence besides your own i mean yes but at the same time, I, I feel like it's the way I was, I raised myself up too. Yeah. Cause like I did have to like, like I didn't have the best connection with my mom and like my parents, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I grew up with like friends as family being influenced by a lot of people, you know what I mean? So you are right. You know what I mean? Like that period where I had time alone, like I, I feel like I know myself more now, you know what I mean? And I feel when I actually wrote that in my notes, dude, like, I just missed, like, just people in my life. Yeah. Like, like, I just wanted them in my life so bad that, you know, I'm like, they make me, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah. And, and there was a, like, during the whole process yeah. of, like, that year mm-hmm. where you isolated yourself from everybody, like, we all just were kind of everyone in the group were just kind of like confused on like where you went and like we yeah. didn't really know what was happening yeah. you know what i mean but you could have reached out anytime but i know there was a yeah. voice in your head basically yeah, saying basically fuck everybody like i need to get to the top like it's not even like i mean it was fuck everyone but at the same time it was very much like i've i i, I knew how bad i became like in terms of like how i treat people and like you know just respecting them just like fucking regular respect towards each other i didn't even give them that you know what i mean yeah and i and i would like like i would shame myself and rightfully so but i felt so guilty to a point where i was like these people don't like me anymore they won't like this neil you know what i mean this is the state that neil's in right now yeah because it's like he's this he's that and i would tell myself these things you know what i mean like he's you know he's, he's annoying he just smokes weed all the time and these are all things i'm just telling myself because i'm ashamed of it yeah, and it's like no outside influence. No it's outside influence whatsoever. You, you know what yeah. I mean? Maybe that the relationship I, I was in. You know what I mean? Like you know how I was talking about like giving so much of so much of myself up. Uh, like I, I I felt like I lost myself. You know yeah. what I mean? Like I think that played a big role too. Because when yo like like we said, them relationships could fuck you up. They <laughs> <laughs> nah. for sure fuck you up, bro. Shit, or, or really <laughs> fuck you up mentally, yo. <laughs> but um. <laughs> 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 but yeah, like that, the, the relationship could have also been a factor. But yeah, um, yeah, like I said, like even coming out of it now, man, like it's definitely not easy because even like still hitting people in the group up and like 
trying to like start a conversation. It's hard, you know, like, I'm thinking like, oh, what are they going to think of me? Do you, you, you think I that? I still think you that. You still have like... And I still think I have, like, I still think that like, There's judgment there, you know what I mean? Even though that, I know you guys probably don't judge, and maybe you guys do, everyone fucking judges, first of all. <laughs> but, like, like it's just something I really have to get over. Like, Neil, like, bro, stop. Like, it, it doesn't fucking matter, you know? If they know what you're going through, if they don't, like, because there's so much shit I go through that, like, I'm ashamed of, you know what I mean? There's guilt that I feel, there's shame that I feel. And it's like, when people know about that, I'm like, oh, vulnerable. Like, people know my vulnerabilities. Yeah. I'm this, I'm that. I was this, I was that. You know? Would this help? This is what helped me. Because mm -hmm. I used to be very self... Uh, I used to have a lot of judgment, like, from other people. And what mindset helped me was, like, nobody really cares about what's going on in my life. Yeah. Like, I'm not important to anybody besides me. That's why I, like, I have this tattoo right here, You Matter. I made a joke about it in my video saying I was like a narcissist. <laughs> and I just look it up myself to feel better. But in reality, like, cause, okay, I, I got this in the beginning because mm -hmm. um, my first girlfriend, I was like, you know, when we were breaking up, I was like obsessed with her and I was like trying to get her back and I was like trying to do everything possible. Yeah. And at the end of it, it didn't work out. So I was just like, okay, you know, the only person that matters is you, like mm -hmm. you matter. And this mindset can be applied to like, like I said, with the self judgment. Mm -hmm. Bro, I've taken so many L's. Like, even this year yeah. alone, bro. Like, I've taken Me L's, and you, bro. I've taken <laughs> L's my whole life. <laughs> I've taken um, L's my whole life. And, like, I know I made mistakes. Yeah. But in reality, no one really cares about my life besides me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Exactly. So, I don't know. Would that help? I mean, like, <laughs> no, it doesn't, Joe. You just said that all for no reason. No, like, I mean, like, it's definitely something I've thought about. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Um... It's something I've told myself when I was younger, too. You know, it's like, no one really gives a fuck about you. In, like, the best way possible, you know what I mean? Like, no one's really, like, praying into your life like that, you know? It's like, yeah. do you really matter like that? <laughs> not really. <laughs> you know? Not really. <laughs> so, like, I mean, like, I feel like I'm, like, like, each day, even, like, coming to Edmonton, each day I'm, like, kind of, like, learning that, really. Yeah. And, like, obviously seeing you, bro, like, on some real shit, like, being able to talk to you about all this stuff, like, it's been a minute, bro. Yeah, it's been like 11 months, bro. Yeah, bro. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. it's good to kind of just like open up to someone about it. Yeah, especially in the group, yo, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not, because I don't want to hold like a group conference. Hey guys, this is where I've been. This is where I've been. This is why I've been depressed. <laughs> yeah. Actually. You have like a like, PowerPoint. A PowerPoint? I'm like, what? <laughs> Bring everyone here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're in like a conference room right now. <laughs> <laughs> the, the meeting room under the hostel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. I 100% I yeah. agree with you and feel you. And bro, like I said, you could talk to me anytime. Yeah. You know that. I've, I've told you this before. You know, I care about you. Mm -hmm. um, My guy. Can you see this on camera? You can kind of see it on camera. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's only two cameras and no third one, you know? It goes both ways, man. Um, I may not be in the best uh, mental space. Well, I'm getting there, but... Yeah, are, like, you know, where I'm are you still at mentally right now, would you say? Happy. I'm, I'm like, I'm happy right now. Well, I'm obviously in Edmonton, not working. <laughs> 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 no tattoos right now, no stress. <laughs> drinking and shit. I mean, drinking, smoking, all that shit. But like... <laughs> instant noodles, bro. Yeah, instant noodles. <laughs> Living the life. <laughs> um, but right now, I mean, if, say I go back to Toronto and everything, all that. I'm in the process of... Building these habits to to get to 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 where I know I'm able to achieve, like get yes. to the spot where I know I've, I'm like with like to the spot where I'm able to handle. You know what I mean? Like I you already seen me before. When I like like how capable I am of reaching that best self. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like that's the goal. Like I said, I can never go back to that same self, but I can do everything in my power. To, I could do everything in my power to recreate that, and hopefully along the way, the feelings from the past do come back, but in a new way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I hundred percent. I a hundred percent agree with yeah. you, and I'm I'm waiting for that time. You know, because yeah. I wanna, 
I want Neil back, you know? Yeah, no, trust me. <laughs> I know trust Neil's me. in there. Yeah, he but... is, bro. Trust me. <laughs> Coming up know, slowly. It's, it's just because, I don't know, life just gets you, you know? And life. It fucking, yeah. it gets hard. It mm-hmm. gets really fucking hard. That's, like, one thing where I'm, like, I, I really hope I don't fall off the deep end, yeah. you know? Like, living alone, like, trying to become what i need to be you know um but yeah um so the price of success i asked you that the the future life that you committed Mm. to yourself the one that you have in your head where you're traveling you're doing all this cool shit oh also one thing we want to do because like we made a prediction last podcast this podcast next year what we want to do is we want to live in los angeles and like Create, I'll create content and then he'd be a be tattoo artist. LA motherfucker. You know? <laughs> we'd have like those glasses, you know? What glasses? Like the Venice Beach glasses, like kind of, I don't know, it's like there's like a gradient towards it, you know? What the fuck are you talking like, about? Like big round, I don't nah, know. Yeah, I don't just know. show me your pictures. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just want to be the, LA, man. Live in the LA. I just want to go to life, Venice bro. Beach, man. Yeah, bro. We'll go to like. S- we'll sit on the beach, work at a hostel. That'd be sick. Go get it. fucking pressed juice every morning. Maybe yeah. go on a run up the mountain. I Hollywood. Won't, I won't do carnivore diet. I'll be a vegan, you know? Ooh, <laughs> Vegetarian. Maybe <laughs> we'll get all the cloud points over there. <laughs> <laughs> we should find, like, the fucking... We should go to all, like, the LA clubs where all the influencers go and oh, shit. Oh, yeah. You know, like, uh, what, what's really that? Fuck. No, I don't even remember what it's called, dude. Ooh. I I I only know, like, the weekend went to that shit one time. It's a like saddle right. ranch. No, not saddle ranch. It's like, do you know what saddle ranch is? No, no idea. Uh, I have no <laughs> idea what the fuck that is. <laughs> not part of that. Like, <laughs> it's like this restaurant where all the celebrities go. Oh, we could do stand up and shit there. That you so could do stand up, brother. That is so you dope, have the confidence bro. for that. I don't know about me yet. Maybe, maybe later on I'll do. I'll do. <laughs> Say fuck you, things about her teenage I think you'd ex- Excel at it. Huh? <laughs> I think you'd excel at comedy. Really? I think so. You're funny, dude. Yeah, I, I got my jokes here and there, but <laughs> I know it's definitely diminished, bro. Like, it's it, fam. I'll be trying to say some jokes. Pfft. I'm just bombing Flies every over people's head. every room I go to, bro. <laughs> bro, I literally in my last video I just made, yeah, I talk about because I talk about white people coming in your life in seasons. Yeah, at one point I'm like, your interests change. That's one of them. Yeah, and I'm like, one thing I was into this past summer was comedy. I was like mm-hmm. going, I was going to open mics. I was like on stage like mm-hmm. almost every night, like fucking doing it i'd bomb every night though <laughs> <laughs> and then i showed a clip of me bombing bro and i was oh, like oh, i'm watching it i was like so embarrassed <laughs> i was like <laughs> but it's bound to happen bro uh, and look you know you could probably go back up there and fucking bomb again <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll definitely do better what bro. i want to do like ideally i'd want to have some type <sighs> of comedy tv show i don't know what the premise would be you think though. there's gonna be tv but in the future bro <laughs> no tv like, show youtube, YouTube show a comedy youtube thing like mm-hmm. nathan fielder there's this Who's comedy up? there's this comedian named nathan fielder yeah he has a show called nathan for you he's the funniest fucking person <laughs> i've like been watching yeah. recently Essentially, what he does is he goes into businesses mm. that are failing, and, and like saves them. He saves them <laughs> with like this the most obscure plan. So like one of them was like um, cheap gas, right? Okay. The only way to get this cheap gas is if you get the rebate. Okay. And the way to get the rebate is you have to deliver your rebate, like the sign yeah, rebate, yeah, yeah. up a mountain. So, <laughs> you were like, well, I'm not going to fucking climb a fucking mountain. Are you yeah, stupid? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then after what he did, he like sent shuttles to go to the mountain. But the people started actually going on the shuttles. Oh my God. So then when he got, when he went, when he finally got to the mountain, yeah. he's just like, okay, guys, you have to solve like a series of riddles <laughs> to try and find the box to put the rebate. And yeah. then it was just like. They mention a clue about a rock, like under a rock. And it's a fucking mountain. There. And then people like search for hours trying to find it. And then they didn't, they couldn't find it. Yeah. They're just like, well, we set up tents if you guys want to stay here overnight. Yeah, yeah. And then some people were like, fuck this. And then some people stayed. Yeah. And then at the end of it, he tried to make this like moral thing about like, oh, like maybe like what is more important is the mm-hmm. friendship we made along the way <laughs> and then they leave and then the fucking mail like the box is like right there <laughs> just trying to fuck with me but i don't know yeah, like no, how i would do though. that 
in a comedic like i don't want to copy him but this i want to do something his format. <laughs> i want to do something funny yeah, yeah with youtube i don't know what it would be but you could definitely shoot that but his his humor is very deadpan i find that shit so oh so just like funny. dry ass yeah, humor? yeah yeah if i could yeah, okay. just talk at this voice and then just like just get, say the most serious yeah, yeah. shit but it's like funny i don't know i think that you be know funny. who i like for that who? you ever watch uh, mark norman I have not, no. Guys, well, yo, I don't even want to spoil too much because, first of all, I don't remember. But <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember at all. But go switch up Mark Norman. The funniest motherfucker. Very just, like, nonchalant, says the funniest shit. And, like, just sells out arenas, mm. dude. He's so good. That's cool. That's yeah. really cool. Yeah, you know, you ever think of going into comedy? Oh, nah. Improv, bro? <laughs> I mean, I'll try Im- uh, improv class. I'll try it for sure. You know, I've tried it with Jen before, like, this oh year. <laughs> How was it? It was all right. It was really? Cool. Yeah, it wasn't that, like, sick, but it was just funny just seeing oh, Jen just do random class. shit. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Wait, did I ask you what are the cons of your future life? Did I ask you that? The cons of my future life? Yeah, I, bro, I didn't even fucking ask you that. Yeah. Damn, what bro. are the cons of it, you think? The most idealistic version, mm. the cons of it. You know, I've always felt jealous of people who do have nine to five jobs, in a sense. You know why, though? Well, you don't know why. I'm going to explain it right now. <laughs> as it's I because, work my nine to five. <laughs> as you work nine to five. But um, it's because that they have like a routine. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? And that's the thing I know I have to implement within my life in order to kind of be like, yeah, if like nine to five, I could do this shit. You know what I mean? It's because I lack routine, you know? But don't you like the chaos, Neil? I like the chaos, but it's too much at this point. (laughs) I need need routine, dude. Like, I can't just be going out there like, fucking love life, man. You know what? Smoke weed. Hey, you want a tattoo? Oh, I'm just going to cancel yours today and fucking go out today, (laughs) man. You know what I mean? Like, I can't be living that way anymore. I got to be, I got to be a bit more responsible. You need like a bookkeeper (laughs) or like an assistant to like help you organize your life. I don't need an assist. I think I could do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, but does, I have like, yeah, I'll have friends for that. I have, you know, I'll organize that shit someday. Yeah. <laughs> One day. It's getting there. It's honestly getting there, bro. Like, so the biggest con, that that is a huge con of being an entrepreneur artist, though. Yeah. Like, just chaos. Like It's just, the whole thing is chaos. You go into it not knowing what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> yeah. you're, you, you pretend like you know what you're doing, but you don't. <laughs> Damn, when I first started tattooing, I quit Longos. And I, first thing I said when I quit, Fuck, what? I don't even have a bed. Like, I don't even, I don't even have, like, ink, bro. Like, <laughs> You're like bro, I don't even have a tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, bro. Like, I'm doing, like, these shitty tattoos on people and everything. But you have to put your foot in that fucking direction, bro. You know yeah. what I mean? In, in any, like, creative endeavor you do, like, like, it's no doubt, like, hard as fuck to just succeed in art. Yeah. But... You just have to put your foot down, you know? I, and, like, you're still continuing your thing. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're still doing your craft, bro. W- what do you think was a bigger struggle? That isolation period you went last year? Mm-hmm. Or when you first started tattooing? Isolation period. The isolation period. The mental state. Like, the when I first started tattooing, that's all excitement. That's all, like, yeah, I didn't know what the fuck I'm doing, but I said, fuck it. You know what I mean? Like, that was <laughs> yeah. my mentality back then. Very much, like... Fuck it, I'm just gonna go do it. Who's the fuck's gonna stop me? Yeah. You know what I mean? The isolation period is different. That's all mental. That's all mental. You're by yourself and you're you're literally talking to yourself. You're saying all this shit to yourself. You know what I mean? And then you're like, oh, let me go smoke some weeds to fucking suppress everything, you know? Oh. Like that period was alone was just like probably the worst part, like times in my life. Really? Yes, dude. Like it was the most, like I haven't felt that lonely ever. Yeah. That was the only time I ever felt that lonely. And you know how much... Like, I had everything I need, Everything I said I needed. You know yeah. what I mean? I had a girl. I had fucking my computer. I was like, bah, 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 bah. My tattoo <laughs> shit. I had, I had my cat. I had, like, money to spend, food, all that shit. But I was alone. I wasn't connected, yo. Like, at all. With anyone. And it was just for the price of success. Yes. To feel, to feel like I succeeded. But That's I didn't. crazy. You know what I mean? That's literally what I'm going through right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm isolating myself from everybody. But have you have you heard that Charles Bukowski poem of uh, Roll the Dice? No, I haven't. <laughs> no. At one point at one point in the poem he says, uh, isolation is the gift. Yeah. 
Um, here, let me just pull it up. Yeah, see if you can find it. Jamie? No, I'm joking. <laughs> yeah, I'm my own Jamie, bro. <laughs> I, for, I literally wrote Jamie. <coughs> I was writing that. Sounds like it's flow state. If you're going to try, go all the way. Yeah. Otherwise, don't even start. If you're going to try, go all the way. This could mean losing girlfriends, wives, relatives, jobs, and maybe your mind. Go all the way. It could mean not eating for three or four days. It could mean freezing on a park bench. It could mean jail. It could mean derision, mockery, isolation. Isolation is the gift. All the others are a test of your endurance, of how much you really want to do it. Mm-hmm. And you'll do it. Despite rejection and the worst odds, and it will be better than anything else you can imagine. If you're going to try, go all the way. There's no other feeling like that. You will be alone with the gods, and the nights will flame with fire. Do it. Do it. All the way. All the way. You will ride life straight to perfect laughter. It's the only good fight there is. So, I see you literally going all the That, your whole thing that you've been talking about, that's you literally going all the way. Yeah. I, like, I, when I committed myself to, like, tattooing, it's like, I told myself I'm going to make it work. Because if I don't make it work, I'm not going to work. Because, like, yeah, what is the alternative? I have no other alternative, bro. I yeah. don't have a plan B. Yeah, you have to stick to plan A. Yeah. If you have a plan B, then, like, you already kind of failed. That's what I'm saying, bro. Like, I, like, going into it, I, I chose so much. I chose tattooing over so much, dude. Yeah. I could have said, fuck tattooing. And there was a point where I was going to quit. Yeah, I mean, there was a point. Where, God, I'm so depressed. Please. <laughs> like, I'm going to quit. Sorry, blah, blah, blah. All that shit. You yeah. know what I mean? And it's like, like, I could have just fucking did that. Went through with that and moved back to Edmonton. That's when I was actually going to think about moving back to really? Edmonton with my mom and everything. And just be like, you know what? I can save money there. I can work somewhere there. Save money. You work at Longo's again. Money, do whatever, you know? And then I, two days, three days passed after my drug binge. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then uh, I said, what the fuck am I doing? Yeah. Because that's your plan A. Yeah. And, like, I sat with myself, like... Nothing in like an unfurnished home, nothing but a like a like a little like the couch pillow, you know what I mean? Before I put it out in the like on the curb the next day, you know? Just There's have, nothing in your crib, nothing in my crib, just a couch pillow in my living room. A couch pillow, yeah. There was nothing in your house, you didn't have a desk, yeah. You didn't have a chair. Yeah. I had my island as my desk, yeah, like the island stand. What like by the, kitchen. the yep. fuck, Neil? Yep. <laughs> you literally gave everything I away. Gave everything away man. did you sell it or give everything away sold and gave yeah that's so fucking crazy now that's so, i've just learned today by the way that yeah. he like had everything. literally nothing I, but I, you had your tattoo gun i have my tat. that's what i had in my bag that day was a fuck ton of clothes to last me i, I didn't bro i left the this is what happened i gave the keys to my landlord and cut at like 12 p.m and made my like way to Toronto. Oh, yeah. Okay. Made my way to Toronto. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, I went with nothing but a backpack, my little guitar, and clothes, um, a water bottle, my iPad, laptop, my drawing books, and it's a big my backpack. light pad, and obviously like hygiene, and like my phone charges, all that shit. You know what I mean? Like, it's just that. That's it. And I, like, I didn't know where I was going. I didn't know where I was going to stay. And I just said, fuck it. I will continue tattooing. I have to make tattooing work. Because if that doesn't work, then, like I said, like, I'm not, like, it's like, life isn't really worth that. You know what I mean? Like, it's not, I don't want to say worth living, but it's like, I'd just be giving up on such a big dream. Yeah. And it's like, like, even like listening to our old podcasts. Bro, like, I was telling you, like, outside in the cold, I'm like, bro, like, I cannot believe that, like, like, we were just spinning facts back then. I know, we were but, but, like, bars. That's, but, look, <laughs> that's when we were actually, like, comfortable, right? Like, that's when we were, like, well, yeah. not necessarily comfortable, like, but we had so much, like, reliance on our parents. So much, like, that they provided for us that it was, like, a glimpse of this is what life could be like. The mindset that you could achieve if you have these things, you know, like if you hold, like if you have your, 
your own place like like your parents give you or like you have your own car like you use your mom's you know what i mean like if you you're able to attain all these things on yourself and achieve that mindset fuck bro you know what i mean like it's just unstoppable so that 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 podcast is just a glimpse of what i could we could both achieve yeah you know what i mean like maybe right, we're looking back now all those like <laughs> facts blah 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 and like some of the things we aren't even doing that we did back then yeah that made us like that you know what i mean so it's so crazy re-watching that podcast it is because like <laughs> is. i'm like saying the exact same thing i'm mm-hmm. saying fucking right now like focus on my health focus yeah. on my wealth focus on my happiness focus on my like relationships mm-hmm. fuck hedonism i'm literally and i was I, I said something that was so specific i was like i work nine to five i go to the gym and then i work on my own business yep. that's literally what i'm doing right now mm-hmm. But at that time, I was doing e-commerce. Yeah. I remember. But you were, like, I had a 9 to 5 e-commerce. You were going at it, bro. Like, you were fucking, like, in it. Like, frugal Joe. That was frugal Joe. Like... Oh, I'm still pretty frugal. No, you're frugal, but I know you you spend some money out there for experiences and all that (laughs) shit, right? (laughs) But, yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, But, yeah, I hope... Not I hope. I know... In the future, We're, we'll be traveling. Yeah, I'll be creating content. You'll be chatting and doing guest spots in fucking places, bro. That'd be yeah. so dope, bro. It's gonna be sick. Let's continue this podcast. We'll fucking talk to creatives. Mm-hmm. Talk to them. Go about, to other hostels. Use their meeting rooms. <laughs> yeah, go to other <laughs> hostel meeting rooms, bro. <laughs> oh, before we move on to the next topic, though. Yeah. Talk about your time of your isolation my isolation yeah like how's it been how's it been ever since like moving out and just being on your ones living with completely new people new city everything so the what i what i realized adjustments you have to make you know yeah like i i also went i also didn't like google anything yeah (laughs) the only thing i googled was what is better toronto or calgary (laughs) (laughs) what did it say a lot of people prefer calgary oh what yeah dude they're saying fuck toronto it's like so busy as fuck like people are fucking assholes yeah no people are way nicer in calgary oh for sure honestly nice some of the nicest people i met yeah well edmonton here yeah yeah in alberta people are pretty nice even though they're conservative you know yeah they are (laughs) (laughs) so um but yeah like people are much nicer there's no commute time yeah. i guess they're they're relating it directly to toronto as well not where mm-hmm. i was from where we were originally from brampton yeah. calgary is kind of like brampton i'd say um like bcc is just right there <laughs> yeah but the biggest thing is like because what i value and neil even has mentioned it a couple times was like connection yeah very and much you see it yeah like in your life. i'm the uh i actually don't want to say this because sounds do say it stuff. say it like because carl and Chow, my friends they always roast me they're like the leader of the group you know hey but, yeah like, i know you very well <laughs> like that title you motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> but it's true you put shit together man yeah so like so my friends they haven't the uh fuck? They haven't yeah. hung out since I left. And now mm-hmm. that I'm coming back, uh, we're all hanging out together again. It's like yeah. 18, 18 fucking people all You're linked together. you connector, bro. Yeah, I know. It's nice. But the thing that I'm missing is that connection. Like, what I, what my mindset coming into it was mm-hmm. like, the Charles Bukowski thing. It was like, isolation is the gift. Yeah. I'm going to isolate myself to get where I want to go. Basically, your mindset. Mm. So it's like, I'm kind of, I'm kind of like seeing the future, yeah. the future version of myself. Like, I'm, I'm going to know the steps I feel, I'm going to go feel like, through. Bro, you're getting there already, man. Like, even, even though you may not seem like you're not there, bro. Like, even me, like, if, ask me if I see that in you. Of course, bro. I feel like you're already like, in that connective part, bro. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I, well, I'm scared I'm going to, like, isolate myself. Because, like, in the pursuit of success. Oh, and, like, yeah. become depressed and <laughs> yeah. drug addict and, like, all I don't that. I think I'll be a drug addict. No, but probably I think not. I'll skip that part. But. No, but um, I, it's easy to fall into that, dude. It is, yeah. It is. So I try to call people. I try to, like, stay in touch because, like, if not, I'm going to go fucking crazy. Yeah. And that's, dude, I need, like, I le- found out <laughs> found that out the hard way. <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, learning from you, yeah. you know? But I I can't live without roommates. Because yeah. if I didn't, 
have roommates, I would actually go insane. Yeah. Like just being by myself. That's literally a big reason why I signed up for MMA and mm -hmm. uh, like Muay Thai Jiu Jitsu because I wanted a community. Yeah. I think I think it's so important to Bro, have people connected <laughs> with you. I've thought the exact same thing. Dude. Oh, just dude. like literally just like going because. Bro, like I like I like working out, you know all that shit. But like, I want I, I don't want to go to the gym, man. You just go there on your ones. I want to be in like a gym where like I'm sparring with my motherfuckers. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like sparring with the other people there, getting to know them, helping ha helping them and them helping me, all that shit. So I'm happy you're doing that. Yo. Yeah, and you, my people, the people at my work's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's just like I miss these connections, and like I can't replace them. You know, yeah. like a human being cannot be replaced. No. You know, <laughs> like so I. Like, I'm glad I'm seeing everybody yeah. um, in November, but I'm going to see what, I don't know, I'm still trying to, like, balance that teeter-totter of, like, success and yeah. connection. I'm trying to combine the both with podcasts mm -hmm. and shit, but we'll see where it goes. Uh, we have 10 minutes left, okay. but that, yeah, that's basically my thing with isolation right now. I feel all right. You know, I try and call my family as much as possible. I try and call my friends as much yeah, as possible. But I know the reason why I came here is to work. Yep. Because cool. me personally, I'm not where I want to be. Yep. And I have a very winner loser mentality. Mm -hmm. uh, the original title, the original topic we were going to talk, talk about was the winner takes it all. And yep. talking about, it's kind of like the same thing. Like mm -hmm. how much, how far will you go to achieve success? Mm -hmm. Uh, with the beauty and the struggle, but yeah, uh, whatever. It's the same thing. <laughs> it's like kind of the same. <laughs> it goes in the same thing. <laughs> um, we have about ten minutes left on this podcast. Uh, I wanted to ask you. Yep. Shoot. This bro. is the theme of the podcast. The theme of the podcast is so the problem that I'm trying to solve in the market okay. is happiness. Yeah. But happiness cannot be a thing to aim for right yeah because of the hedonic treadmill i explained this in my past podcast now i think about it so meaning is a better thing to aim for yeah. so what i'm the reason why i'm chasing meaning is because truth rel truth is in meaning mm -hmm. that's wh that's where you will find it so i'm trying to find every single piece of truth that i can find um you know within the creative people i talk to mm -hmm. so i wanted to ask you Neely Castile. Yeah, baby. <laughs> what is the meaning of life? Or what is the meaning of your personal life? Ooh, deep question. Yeah. Um, I've had a lot of time to think about this. And it's not something like I dwell on too much just because it's like, it's just one of those things you never know. It's like it's always changing. Yeah. Um, for this part of my life, though, I generally think that my meaning right now is, is literally it's, it's literally to be my best self and because I know that's gonna shine to others too, yo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's the biggest thing. Like, like yeah, the tattooing is great. The career is great too. You know what I mean? I'm just grateful I have this career. But again, connection, you know, like it's it's something I've told myself I value a lot, like before. And it's the same thing I want for like for my life, really. It's just to be connected with people again, because there's no other feeling than that. The drugs can't replace that. I've felt it enough times here in Edmonton, like even just meeting new people. Like there's times where I'll like I'll be like withdrawals, you know what I mean? And withdrawals like, of like like just like like weed, cigarettes, whatever. Oh, yeah. You know, if I like, go a day or two or whatever without it, like I'll get withdrawals and everything, but. It seems that every time I have those shit days of like, fuck, I don't have my cigarettes, fuck, I don't have my weed. Anytime I hang out with someone, that's the only thing I need. I go home and I don't even think about it. I don't think about the weed, I don't think about the cigarettes. It's a connection that I think about, bro. I think about, wow, what a wonderful conversation I just had. Or what an amazing time I had with this person. You know what I mean? Like, all those things matter, man. You know, and I'm just happy I'm able to like... I guess, like, be able to tell myself that, you know? Like, it's not something that I tell myself too often or I'm, like, asked too often. But yeah. it's that, like, just striving to be my best self to so it affects others, too. Yeah. yeah. It's a crazy transformation you've been in this past year. It is. It's came from total isolation yeah. 
to finally realizing you need the connection and the people within your life. Yeah. So one one thing I wanted to ask you. Mm-hmm. So during that period of isolation, the people you pushed away, mm-hmm. do you think you're gonna repair those relationships? Um, not all of them. Like, yeah. To be completely honest, not all of them. Um, I still, you know, like I told you in the car, like still finding ways to trust more people and to like, I'd probably just say like, see the better side in people. Cause when I see the better side in people, it's like, I trust them. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, what was the question? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I was just talking about Oh, am I going to repairing? repairing. Um, uh, yeah. yeah, there's some people that I won't just for good reason for my mental like just my mental sake. Um, and it's nothing like personal on them. You know, maybe I should just reach out and be like, "Hey, sorry, I ghosted you, blah blah." But um yeah, there's just some people I won't be repairing those relationships with um and I think I mean, it's a two-way street too. You know, if they want to accept that like me apologizing or even like repairing those friendships then yeah of course i'd like give it another try and everything too you yeah know what i mean um yeah it's something it's that's very much like i'm still trying to figure all that out like it's like who do i want to repair it with you know uh because i just i'm very like even the time of isolation i still had time to there there was still like some conscious thoughts there of like well, I know this person's using me. I know that person's using me. You know what I mean? For either... It's weird to say, but, like... It could be just, like, um, getting a tattoo for free. Oh, yeah. Or um, getting photos for free. Um, there's so much, and it's, like... It got to a point where I just didn't trust anyone, man. You know what I mean? It's like, I have to be weary of that because it, it happens. And I hate admitting that, but it happens, yo. And it's like, that's, I think that's the part where it fucked me up of like seeing the good in people. It's yeah. like finally realizing who those people are. Um, and like, yeah, just like understanding who those people are. And it's like, okay, like it is what it is. You know what I mean? But I just... I don't have to like associate myself with them anymore. Yeah. You know? I'm glad you're coming to the point or you're trying to trust people more. It's, yeah. I know it's very hard. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and, uh, but it's an ongoing process that For takes sure. a long time to build. But um, I wanted to, we're going to close off the podcast mm-hmm. right now. Is there any closing remarks you have on uh, be- uh, finding sh- beauty in the struggle? Um. Let me think real quick. <laughs> you got 30 yeah, well, seconds. Well, you know what? Whoever the fuck is watching this, keep going. That's it. Just do it. Keep going and just do it. Because if you have your mindset on a goal, and you're just going through it, you, just, you know, just no, no plan B. Just go for it. You know what I mean? And keep going. Maybe that's bad advice, but for those motherfuckers that believe in, so, in themselves like that, you know who you are. And that's it. Stick to plan A, baby. Stick to plan A. I'm glad you, uh, <laughs> I'm glad to see, like, I'm, I'm happy to see where you're at right now, Neil. Thanks, man. I love your brother. I love you, too. All right, this is the end of the episode uh, 25, Joe Pajosa Podcast. Stay on average, fools. Stay on average.